Hello and welcome to Mr. Brandt's 5th grade everyday math review. In this video we're going to be going over lesson 3.2. We've got two, two problems here and then we'll do our, our practice at the end. So first problem, Emily bought one new spool of fishing line. She is going to be using that spool on three new fishing poles she received for her birthday. How much fishing line will she use for each fishing pole? Let's come over here and look at our questions. And our first question is, how many objects are being shared? Well, according to this problem, it's one, and it's the one new spool of fishing line. That's what's going to be shared. The next question is, how many people are sharing? Oops, I forgot to put my... So there's one object being shared. How many people are sharing? Well, in this case, it's not people that are sharing. It's actually fishing poles. And there are three new fishing poles that are going to be shared. So the question is, how much line will she use for each fishing pole? Now, this video is a little bit different from the last one because they want to include a number model with this. And a number model is basically another way of saying a, you know, like a math problem. So when we're doing problems like this, we are dividing up the objects being shared. We are dividing the objects being shared. So we're going to have a division problem here. And the one object being shared is the dividend. That's what's being divided. I should use orange for that. Then, what's it being divided by? In this case, it's being divided between the three fishing poles. So we're going to have 1 divided by 3. And what is 1 divided by 3? Well, for that, we're going to use a picture. So here's our, this is going to represent the one spool of fishing line. And it needs to be put into three groups. So pull one, I'm going to say pull A, pull B, and pull C. So pull A gets one piece out of the three total pieces. So it's one third. So one divided by three is equal to one third. And in class, we spend a lot of time talking about fractions are division problems. Fraction, fractions are actually related to division problems. So the numerator at the top is the dividend and the denominator on the bottom is the divisor. So when we have a problem like one divided by three, we can just write our answer being one third, or you can use a picture to help you help you look at that. All right, let's move on to our second problem. Our second problem, Alexis, Addie, and Michael are going to share an eight pound bag of Legos. How many pounds of Legos will each person get? Okay, starting again with our first question, how many objects are being shared? Well, in this case, the object being shared is an eight pound bag of Legos. So eight objects, eight pounds are being shared. How many people are sharing? In this problem, they're not numbered, but we have Alexis, we have Addie, and we have Michael. So that shows us there are three people sharing. Three people sharing. As we talked about in the previous problem, we have to come up with an algorithm. So the object or the object being divided is the dividend. So that's going to be eight. And it's being divided by the three people. It's being divided by the three people. So we have eight divided by three. And as we said, fractions are division problems. The numerator is related to, or the numerator is the same as the dividend. So that's going to give us an eight at the top. The denominator is the same as the divisor. So that's going to give us a three on the bottom. So eight divided by three is the same as eight thirds. Now, we can go ahead and stop there. We can leave that as our answer. Or 
we can turn this into a mixed number. And there is a variety of ways that we can turn it into a mixed number. Um, I'm just going to show one right now. And I'm going to do it with a picture. So I I'm going to start. Here's my, this represents three thirds. This is going to be another three thirds. So three thirds and three thirds is six thirds. So I have to have another one here. So if these two together is six thirds, this is going to be seven thirds and eight thirds. So this is going to represent two thirds. So if I put all of this together, my six thirds and my two thirds, that's going to be the same as eight thirds. So as you can see, I have one, two whole amounts here. So eight and one third is going to equal two. And then I have uh, the two thirds here. So two and two thirds is the same as eight thirds. Again, uh, throughout the year, we're going to be learning different ways of doing that. Um, and if you have other strategies to do that, you're, you're more than welcome to use those other strategies. Uh, this is the strategy that I chose to show in this video. For the practice, we are doing some division and some extended division facts uh, based on fact families. And I'm going to, uh, the, the three examples that we're going to do are 560 divided by 7. We're going to do 560 divided by 70. And we're going to do 5,600 divided by 70 again. Now, when I look at these problems, I'm seeing the 7 and the 56. And, and those are part of a fact family. And the... Can you think of the number that goes with that fact family? Well, 7, 8, and 56 are part of that fact family because 7 times 8 is 56. 7 times 8 is 56. 56 divided by 7 is 8. And 56 divided by 8 is seven. So all those numbers, or those three numbers then make up a fact family. So for this first problem here, 560 divided by seven, well I know that 56 divided by seven is eight. So I'm gonna, so I'm gonna, I know I'm gonna have an eight here, and this side has a zero, this side does not have a zero. Since they both don't have zeros, we're going to use this zero and put it here. So 560 divided by 7 is 8. If we wanted to get, you know, if we wanted to think of this another way, uh, 56 times 10 is 560. 7 is just 7 times 1. So we originally put an 8 here. 8 times 10 would be 80. That's another way to think about it. I won't do that for the rest of these. Okay, for the second problem, 560 divided by 70. Well, with our staying in the same fact family, I know I have to have an 8 on this side. When I look at this side, there's a 0. And when I look at this side, there's also a 0. So we can cancel those zeros out, which is the same as dividing both of those numbers by 10. And we're left with 56 divided by 7, which we already talked about. That's 8. So in this case, the answer is just going to be 8. Then moving on to the third one. Again, we're still in the same fact family, 56 and 7. So I know I'm going to have an 8 in my answer. As I look at this side, there's two zeros. And when I look at this side, there's one zero. So I can cancel out one zero from both sides. That, which is the same as dividing by 10, which leaves me with one zero on this side. Since there's one zero on this side, I'm going to take that zero and include that in my answer. So 5,600 divided by 7 is 80. Uh, 
thanks for thanks for watching the video if any of this stuff is confusing remember ask your teacher at school they should be able to help you out have a great rest of your day